We mentioned earlier the fact that the Saints did the trade a few weeks back to get an extra first-round pick, that deal with the Philadelphia Eagles that sacrificed, among other things, next year's first-rounder for the Saints. Here's Mickey Loomis talking about the decision to pull the trigger on that transaction with Philly. For us, it's an opportunity to get, I think, another good player um, a year ahead of time for a value that we liked. That's, in a nutshell, what it was. The mystery of it is you don't know where you're picking in the future. Look, if, if we, you know, have a successful season and, and uh, are picking late in the draft, that favors us. And if, if, we, if we don't and we're picking early in the draft, then that's a pretty good deal for uh, Philadelphia. And so um, that's, that's, part of the, that's part of the equation. Um, but the bigger piece is how does the player perform that we, we select? Because, you know, for example, if you traded your whole draft away and you got Tom Brady, Everybody would say that's a great draft. Now, they, would, they wouldn't say that it was a great trade before that happened, but after the fact, they'd say, "Look, man, look at that. So um, ultimately, it comes down to who you select and how well that player performs. I think the Saints believe they're going to be pretty good this year. That's my big takeaway from what he just said. They think they're going to be pretty good. They've swept Tom Brady two straight years. Yeah, they lost to him in the playoffs when it really mattered. But remember, twenty the, to the, ten. The final memory, yeah. the final memory from from last season as it relates to Bucks Saints was yeah. Dennis Allen stepping in for Sean Payton right. and shutting out Tom Brady. So I think they believe they're going to be pretty good. So that twenty twenty three pick they've given up, which yeah. will be exercised by the way in three hundred and sixty four days, twelve hours and four minutes. That pick is not going to be very high. So, it's going to be later that night in Kansas City that's coming up in 364 days, 12 hours and two minutes. So with all that you just said and that there right there, do you in like your heart of hearts, do you think they're going to go quarterback? Do you think they'll do it? Like I want to say no because of what you just said there. That, that's what I want to say. You know, But, I mean, again, I don't think it's crazy to go Kenny Pickett there. I understand it. There's logic there. Uh, but, but but for the reasons you just stated, I, I – that's why I feel like they won't go QB, but maybe I'm wrong. I think we have to watch all the teams that tried to get Deshaun Watson. I think those are the teams that, in my mind, a solid point. have right. put us on notice that they're thinking quarterback. And yeah. just because they brought back Jameis Winston, that doesn't mean yeah. that they're all in with Jameis Winston. And now that you have extricated Taysom Hill from the quarterback room, that creates a spot. They've got Ian Book who was a fourth-round pick out of Notre Dame last year and and was the guy who caught the short straw in that Monday night disaster against, against the, the Dolphins. Miami Dolphins right. when when Sean Payton literally walks into the locker room and guys are getting dressed in uniform, and he's like, who the hell are those guys? That's yeah. how far down they were on the list of players that were actually suiting up among the 46 active game day players. So I think there's a spot for a quarterback. And the other side of this, too, I don't know how much longer Mickey Loomis is going to be the GM of the Saints. Not, not because he's on the hot seat, but because he may decide, I, you know, Sean Payton's gone, I'm gone. It's right. time for me to move on. How many more years do you churn this through? And that may be a factor in giving up next year's first round pick. Let's get that guy in here early because I don't know. Maybe I got two, three, four years. I haven't heard anything specific, but yeah. that may be part of it as well. But I, look, they were after Deshaun Watson. That tells me mm -hmm. they're at least thinking about a quarterback better than any of the quarterbacks they had last year. And even though Winston didn't get the full season, he was not spectacular. No, he was not. In the first eight weeks. Right. He wasn't. No, agreed. But they were still a good team. They were. And they still almost made the playoffs. After all that adversity they went through last year, they still almost made it. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's something that you you know, you know kind of said it to start the show. I mean, what, what are the Saints got? I mean, they're the ultimate inside-out team. They got freaking killers on both sides of the ball on the offense and defensive line. I mean, they, they're just, they do. It's just, it might not be like, yes, yeah, superstar sack artist, but, you know, like Cam Jordan's always going to be around 10, 12 sacks, and he's going to be dominant in the run game. They got, they're a big physical football team. Uh, so I, I can under, I can see it going both ways tonight. I'm going to be very interested. And it's really, like I said, after the Falcons at eight, I just look at that to go, all right, you know, I don't really think – I'm not thinking quarterback until the Saints or unless some team trades up in front of them. Uh, but I, I really look at that to be the spot to start going, all right, now here's quarterback time. Let's see if this happens now.
Now, like I said, the teams that were after Deshaun Watson and didn't get him are the ones that I'm paying the most attention to when it comes to quarterbacks yeah. tonight. And the three finalists that ultimately lost out to the Cleveland Browns are all in the same division, the NFC South. The Saints, we've talked about. The Falcons, we'll get to unless we don't. The Panthers, we have to talk about them because yesterday their owner, a day after Scott Fitterer checked the box on the mandatory pre-draft press conference, the owner decides, I'll sit for one too, which is odd to me. I don't know what the motivation was for David Tepper to show up and start talking when he isn't required to talk one day before a pretty strategic and important moment. And you better be careful what you say because you don't want to say too much. Otherwise, somebody's going to cut the line in front of you to get the guy you want. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.